we're going to try doing this with just mini masks first and no pruning. And then we'll do what the actual problem asks for, which is with pruning. So here we'll do mini masks with no pruning. So as a human doing mini max with no pruning, I guess we need to know whose turn it is. That's important. This is max. As a human doing mini max, it's easiest to just start from the bottom of the tree and go up. The computer would start at the top and recurse down to the bottom and then go back up, but we get to start at the very bottom. So we can start over here with K and L and one question first is, what do we do with all of these numbers in the graph? Do we need all of these numbers? Which ones do we need? The leaves. The leaves. The leaves. So that means we don't need anything that's not a leaf, because we're statically evaluating uh, the third level in this case, and maybe higher up for nodes that are leaves higher up. So if this was part of a bigger tree, then they, these wouldn't necessarily be leaves, like maybe the game goes on further. But we've been told that we're statically evaluating that, that level. We can just get rid of all of these numbers that aren't leaves. So we can ignore all of those. And now what happens if we go down the left branch to this F10? What does that 10 mean? So if we were doing alpha beta, then we would say b is less than or equal to 10. In this case, with mini max, we don't even need to do that. We can just start down here and then propagate some values up. But yeah, for alpha beta, that's what we would do. So we'll do that on the next round. So I guess we should start down here with k and l. If we get to node g, which move will max take? L. L. So we'll do this in purple. Max would get a score of 11 there, going to L. And so now we know what score would Min get at B. 10? Yeah, because Min wants the smaller value. So Min would go that way and get 10. And then if we go over here and start at the bottom, what would Max get at no die? 13. 13. And then this is just a 9, so what would min get at C? 9. So this is pretty easy. We're just taking the min and max, and you just have to keep track of whose turn it is, whether it's min's turn or max's turn. And down here, what would max get at J? 8. 8. There's no choice there. And so min would get 8 here. Oh, I guess this 3 is still here, I believe. OK, so now we can answer the question, what would max get at the top? because Max wants the biggest score. So Max would get a score of 10 there, which coincidentally is the same as the heuristic value, but that's just a coincidence. And How yeah. do we get the order of the nodes are expanded? We just do like A, L, G, F. So in this case, we did it sort of randomly. Yeah. But if you're, if you're doing it, it's going to actually make a difference in alpha beta. Are you asking about the question that's on the? Oh, no, just like if you just mean you Max, we don't need to. To worry about the order we are saying. Not if you're doing it the human way, no. I mean, technically, you would be cursed down and you would have to look at this and get 10 and then go down here and get 7 and 11 and remember that 11 is here and bring them up there. Okay. So you would do it in depth for a search order, I guess, okay. is the answer to your question. Okay. But in general, we don't really need to know the order if you're, for this. If you're doing minimax as a human, then it, it's not going to matter. Okay, in the okay. End. Yeah. Are there other questions on plain minimax? Okay, so now let's see what happens if we do with alpha beta. <coughs> we'll take another color for this. Now do we care about these heuristic values that are crossed off? Any guesses? Who thinks we care about these values now? Who thinks we still don't care about them? OK, yeah, you're all right. Because we're still evaluating at the lowest level of the tree, so we don't need these other heuristic values. OK, so 
so now we're going to do what was originally suggested, where we go down to f, and that tells us that at node b, min is guaranteed to get a score of at most 10. So then we're going to go down to, so now we've evaluated that number. Now we're going to go down to g, it looks like we have to recurse down and look at k. So what does k tell us? Max will get at least 7, because Max wants a higher score. So we've evaluated that one. Do we need to evaluate L? Yeah, because we don't know yet whether Max wants to go down this, whether Min wants to go down this branch, because 7 could be better than the 10. So we'll evaluate L, and we see that now Max is guaranteed to get a score of exactly 11, because Max will choose to go that way. And what does that tell us at B? Ten. Yeah, so that tells us that at B, min will definitely go left, that's going to be equal to 10, because min doesn't want this 11. So, so far, we're getting the same result as mini max. What does this tell us at A? It's going to be at least 10. Yeah, max is going to get at least 10. So max wants to go and look at C, D, and E to see if those can be any better. So we'll be cursed down and evaluate H and see that that's a 9. Uh, what does that tell us at C? At most, uh, at most 9. Do we need to keep going down this branch? Oh. Why not? Because uh, Max will see that uh, that branch will be at most 9 when it wants yeah. to at least 10. Yeah, so Max looks down here and says, well, if I take move C, then Min is going to get a score of at most 9. So I'm definitely better off going to B where I'll get a score of 10. So Max is going to stop looking at that branch and move on to the next one. So now we've managed to not have to evaluate M and N this time. So then we go to D. Looks like this is main gets exactly 3 at D. Will Max go down this branch? No, so the left branch with this 10 score still looks like the best. Then we go down this one. And we have to go all the way to the bottom because this might be a big number, in which case Max would want to take this branch. But it turns out it's 8, so Max gets 8 there, and Min gets 8 there, and we don't actually want to go down that branch. So we got the same result as mini Max, which will always be the case, but we managed to evaluate slightly less nodes. So we managed to avoid evaluating M and N. So now if we look at the other questions on this page, it says, list the nodes you statically evaluated in the order you evaluated them. So which nodes did we statically evaluate? What, yeah, F is the first one that we statically evaluated. So if we're listing those nodes, we're going to start with F. And because we kept track of which ones we evaluated, we can just read them off in order from left to right. So we get F, K, L, H, D, and O. And which move does Max choose? B. Yeah. And you would get the same answer from mini Max. Then there's this question, which of the nodes could you change the value to zero and it wouldn't matter? So what's a node where it wouldn't matter? Five. I? Yeah, so all of these ones where we cross them off, those could be zero. So it could be zero again. So all of these ones that were crossed off, which would be A, B, C, E, C, G, I, and J. What other nodes could be zero and it wouldn't matter? Yeah, M and N, because when we did alpha beta, we ended up not actually caring what those values were. We can add M and N to this list. 
the tricky part of this question is some of these nodes that we evaluated, if they had been zero, we still would have gotten the same answer in the end. So which nodes does that apply to? O? Yeah, so if O would be zero, that's still less than 10, and we still wouldn't have gone down that branch, so that works. And then similarly with D, if that was zero, we still would have chosen the left branch. So let's see, we can look at F. Can F be zero? No, because that's the one that we were actually choosing, so we can't have F. What about H? Could that be zero? So what was the function of h? So we can imagine if we had 0 here, then here we would have had less than or equal to 0. And we still would have pruned this branch and not gone down the rest of it. So we would have, had, we would have followed the same search if we did that. So h is in this list. And then the last two to ask about are k and l. Could those be 0? Yeah, k could be 0, because that was smaller than 10 anyway. It turns out L has to be bigger than 10, or else what would have happened? If that was a 0, then Max would have chosen 7 here, and Min would have gone down this branch to G, so that would have affected the search. So there's the answer to that problem.